Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmay here for Simple Snippets. Welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms. And let's continue on with the hashing topic which we have started in the previous video of this DSA course. If you guys have missed that, please do check it out because watching that video will give you a proper understanding of what is hashing, why we need hashing and how is it better compared to some other data structures. We've talked in detail about the introduction to hashing and you know the entire concept and after that we also briefly took an example of what happens when you know there is a collision and this is what this video is going to be all about we're going to talk about in detail what is a collision in hashing and understand how it happens as well as what are the different types of collision resolution techniques okay this is going to be a short theoretical video but before watching this i am assuming you guys have watched the previous video if not please make sure you watch that this one is going to be a very short and quick one. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so we've already talked about what is hashing. This part is something that we've already covered in the previous video. So I'm not going to go over this. Our main focus today is going to be what is collision in hashing and the different types of collision resolution techniques. So let's understand what this word is. What is collision basically? So in hashing, a collision happens when the hash function generates same hash that is same output for a different set of keys that is the input okay so this scenario happens when you get two different inputs you provide it into the hash function and you get the same output okay this is what a collision is collision is where two outputs are same for two different set of inputs so why does this happen well basically collision emerges due to the fact that hashing maps any input generally of arbitrary size Okay, so the input generally is of any size, any random size, but the output is of a fixed length code. Okay, meaning that the input generally is of infinite set of available inputs. So we have huge set of inputs, but there are always a finite set of available outputs. And this basically means that eventually the hash function will generate repeated hash for different set of inputs. Okay, this is the actual crux or actual reason behind the collision occurrence okay and in reality or in the practical world no hash function is a ideal hash function which generates unique hashes or unique outputs for different inputs okay there will be some cases no matter how good your hash function is no matter how advanced and sophisticated your hash function is collision is inevitable okay at least in the practical sense when we are dealing with real world data and you know the input size is huge but the output size is limited okay in that case collision always happens once again let me repeat a collision happens when hash function generates same hash that is same output for different set of keys that is different set of inputs okay if you guys are noting down for theory purposes you can take a screenshot of this screen or note down these points if you're you know writing or preparing answers for your exams now here's an example diagrammatically of a collision example here the hash function is given h of key equals to key mod 10 okay so the first key over here is 10 you say 10 mod 10 now this is obviously gonna give us 0 correct so you can see the yellow arrow which is going as input and the yellow arrow which is coming out as output which is giving 0 0 is nothing but the index in the hash table this is where we store 10 okay all right the next key is 1 so now you say 1 mod 10 which is going to give you 1 correct so you can follow the red arrow and you get index position 1 where this 1 is stored now for the last key 20 again you say 20 mod 10 and since 20 is completely divisible by 10 again you are going to get 0 so if you follow the blue arrow you can see one more time we are getting the same index but you can see already we have stored 10 as the key so where to place 20 so this is the real question when a collision happens okay so this is an example of collision happening let's say you are also wanting to insert 30 so even 30 mod 10 is going to give you 0 40 mod 10 is going to give you 0 so because of this hash function being written like this there are multiple numbers which will result in index position 0 correct now this is just a very easy example of a hash function there are much more complicated hash functions which have many many mathematical calculations as well but even in those cases when you are dealing with practical large amount of data collisions are bound to happen and now the real question where to place this key when you already have one key placed at that same index position is where the collision resolution comes into picture 
now we know that collision has already happened so now we need some solution right so this is where collision resolution concept comes into picture so now that you have understood what is a collision let's take a look at what is collision control or collision management techniques or what exactly is collision control basically in very simple terms the process of finding alternate index position in the hash table is called collision control or collision management so this question that is answering this question where to place 20 right this is where collision control comes into picture and when you're talking about collision control commonly there are two methodologies to approach collision control one is called closed hashing also called as open addressing the second one is called open hashing also called as separate chaining okay these are two different methodologies and in closed hashing we have three variants generally three variants which is linear probing quadratic probing and double hashing okay now if these terms are complicated don't worry we are gonna go one by one and cover all these individual different techniques with examples and we will also try to solve some questions so you'll understand all those things but for now just understand that collision control is nothing but finding an alternate index position for this collided value so each of these techniques will determine where to place this 20 in this table okay and each of them has different way of you know determining the index position that is all about collision management or collision control okay okay so this was just a detailed introduction to what is a collision when you are doing hashing why does a collision happen that is because generally we have infinite set of available inputs and only a finite set of available outputs because if you see the definition also of hash function hashing is the process of converting a given input which is generally of arbitrary size it can be of random size but it converts it into an output which is generally of fixed size so if you have thousand keys but if you only have you know 100 memory locations obviously some keys are gonna go into same same memory locations right now how you place them is called collision control so that is the reason why collision happens and this is the example we saw a very basic example of collision and how to resolve collision is basically called collision control which has two general methodologies one is closed hashing second is open hashing closed hashing has three variants three basic variants linear probing quadratic probing and double hashing and we will study these in detail in further videos i just wanted to give you a good introduction to what is collision why collision happens in hashing and the types of collision resolution okay so i'm gonna wrap up this video this video was a short theory video just to give you an overview about collision and you know why collision happens and what is collision control or management in further videos we will take detailed introduction and understanding of these individual collision control techniques so i'm gonna wrap up this video over here if you like this video please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments how this video was do share this entire dsa playlist with your friends with other it students other computer science students this will benefit them as well and thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one peace